here we go. Let's do this. We've got one life, one shot. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Addicted to Betterment, a podcast to inspire us to keep going, to try something new, to dream, to think big, bigger, to overcome. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. David and Nikki, ready to flow. So how about them beats? We're fired up by this new intro music. Hope you are too. So how do you keep your fire lit? How do you stay inspired? We really want to know. I've been in a funk lately and I go through this where sometimes I challenge myself on the roller coaster of the highs and the lows. And David has challenged me many times to think about that a little bit different. But I think we all go through times of lack of inspiration and need a boost. And others of us maybe like me where I like to live at this very high vibration, high energy, fired up about things. You know, it doesn't always go like that. And you think about when the conversation that you spent so much time preparing for ends in a fight or the unexpected bill comes or when the deal doesn't close or the client doesn't renew or you bomb the keynote, when the kid is disrespectful, when you gain 10 pounds, sometimes you just think, screw it, I give up. Or sometimes you let the doubt creep in And maybe just this isn't for me. I'm just not meant for this. But how do we stay inspired to keep going? David, you're exceptional at keeping a positive, can do anything. This day is going to be great. And I love that so much about you. It's my experience to see that you keep a pretty high way of living and your fire is always lit. But is it? And how do you keep your fire lit? That's a pretty direct question and it's challenging me to be vulnerable in this episode. So thank you for that. You know, it's cool because it's springtime here in Indiana. I don't love Indiana weather, but the one thing I do love about spring leading into summer and fall is one of the favorite practices that we have, and that is fire pit conversations. So we have a beautiful fire pit with great seating around and Nikki and I love to host friends and family and in the evenings and have a fire pit and some cocktails and generate meaningful conversation. However, what I did not know going into this relationship, and I wish someone would have warned me, told me, maybe you could have had it on your profile or something is your affinity for lighter fluid in the fire. It is sometimes scary. If I'm being honest, (laughs) how much you love to spray what seems to be gallons of that lighter fluid. And I'm afraid it's going to burn the house down, the neighborhood down, the city of Indianapolis is going to go up in flames if I don't get that lighter fluid out of your hands. It's terrifying at times. And it burns this insanely hot, big fire that you have to stand back at least 10 feet or it's going to send your eyebrows. If you don't keep that lighter fluid going, it's going to come back down to just a normal flame. And think about it this way, as hot and as big and as crazy as that fire was when you were just pouring that lighter fluid on it and it comes back down to a regular flame, that regular flame actually seems small and insignificant. And you almost have this craving to pour some more lighter fluid on it and just keep it going. And it's like, babe, this was our third bottle of lighter fluid that we went through tonight. But the reality is every situation in life, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your fire for business, sometimes it's simply your fire for life. It's hard to keep that fire burning as hot and it does dwindle. And the key is, is what do you do when it does go down? Because we all face that. If you're a high achiever, you face it even more because when you don't feel like you're succeeding in areas of your life or you feel like they're not abundant or they're not flowing the way it's even harder to deal with it and you just feel like more of a failure or you feel like you're less of an achiever when you're not doing that well. And so when that fire dims as it's going to, the reality is it's unavoidable when it does. How do you feel? How do you manage it? How do you handle it then? What do you think about building a fire tonight around the fire pit? You and I, and I will make sure the lighter fluid is hidden. What do you think about that? I don't know. I think we have like half a bottle left. So uh, that half a bottle that we do have left, I could just use that and have a lot of fun. I'll just limit myself. So how you do anything is how you do everything. So I guess this applies to the lighter fluid thing. I don't know. I mean, I was just sitting here listening to that. And it's really funny. My family's always joke about my lighter fluid thing as well. I don't know what it is. I just love to, you know, make something fired up. I, so it is, you know, how you do anything. 
So David, if you were to break down, just to give us a little insight, because I shared you're really good at keeping a positive attitude, even though something rocky happened, like you get right back on and keep that effort going. So whether that's easy or hard for you, how do you have a Wednesday that knocks the wind out of you and Thursday wake up with high level of energy and can do anything mindset? How do you do that? I work really hard at it. I feel that too. I feel that sometimes the fire's gone. And I think the thing I learned a long time ago for myself is when I feel that depression or that anxiety or that lack of motivation, that lack of fire, that doubt that you described earlier, or if it's in our relationship, which is God's loudest gift in my life. But if it's a season of challenge in our relationship or maybe at work and I'm going through a season there where I feel like I'm just swimming upstream. I feel like the current is not only is it hard for me to move the boat up the stream, but I feel like the current's taking me backwards. I'm going the wrong way. The one thing I try to do is wake up every morning, setting the intention for a new day. Or if it's in the middle of the day or in the evening, I try to quickly reset and remove myself from the moment and look at a high level is this moment of frustration with my kid or losing motivation and getting discouraged in business. Is this my reality? Is this the big picture or is this a moment of frustration, a moment of temporary discouragement? And I try to utilize the tools that I have learned over time for me that work. And we can talk more about that as we get into this episode, but utilize those to just grab that can of lighter fluid. And sometimes it takes a while to get it lit back up. I won't move forward until I've done that. And I think that's been my key to success is I'm not going to engage in whatever this is until I have managed to do that for myself. I know that if I work hard on myself before I do anything else and get myself in the right place or in the right positive mindset or fired up, as you like to say, I know if I do that first, everything else will follow. Yeah. And so I think the key is we must make conscious choices to fuel or refuel our fire as seasons change or as a day sucks, whichever one that it is, it's this conscious choice not to allow the dark cloud to take over. And each of us knows what our lighter fluid is. Some of us get very inspired by learning from others and their stories, or maybe we have a grandparent that we call or a good friend. And we know that those conversations refuel us. Like we all have toolbox things and you need to know what those are and lean into those. There are a couple of thoughts that I have that I wanted to see, David, if you had anything else to add to this list of action items and we can go from here as to tactically, what can we do or what works to light the fire or what you can use for that lighter fluid. So number one is recentering to your why. When a conversation is tough with kids, man, you just feel defeated. And it's like you put all this effort in to be able to have this robust conversation sitting in the living room on Friday night before we all go out and do the activity that we have planned. And that conversation is meant to connect and just have an enjoyable time, but it doesn't always go that way. What is it that you use at that time to refuel your fire and going and digging deep into like, what's the why? The end game is we want a strong relationship. We're not going to give up because we don't want to go the opposite and say, all right, well, peace out. Like, and I'm not going to keep going because I want to recenter in the why. We want a great relationship with you. So we're going to keep trying rather than giving up. So number one on recentering to the why. Number two is around writing things down and getting really clear on your intention what it is that you're looking to do, getting really clear journaling. And we talk about our morning routine. You know, if Wednesday was really challenging on Thursday, waking up and it's a brand new day, like David said, and being able to write out, here's how today is going to go. Here is what is going to happen today. Here is what I'm going to accomplish today to get clear on what that looks like. I think so much of life is having a vision and clarity. And then taking those actions spending time around others that inspire us. Are we by ourselves? Are we operating alone? Are we operating around people that don't really add to the fire? 
and making sure that we're around those people and then celebrating the wins, even the smallest of wins. Because as achievers, you want these big things, you have these huge goals. And when sometimes the client deal doesn't work out, that's towards the goal that you've been working on for so long, even though we didn't get the deal, man, we learned a lot from that conversation and celebrating that win because we are not going to go down that path again. No, that's really good. I think we should break it out into two areas of our life. Let's talk about our relationships and let's talk about business because I feel like those are the two areas that most often it's easy to feel overwhelmed with the dwindling fire. It's easy when the fire feels like it's a little harder to get burning hot that it can feel defeating, deflating. We're all dealing with things in those areas. How often have you had a friend or your significant other or your family, a parent, a kid? I have four boys. I can tell you they all incredible in their own way and challenging in their own way equally. And if you have kids, I know you can relate fully to that, whether it's extended family, friends, but in a relationship. So your significant other, you have times that you feel it's amazing. It can't get any better. You're just like, this is the top of the world. And then a few days later, or weeks later, or months later, you find yourself in this season of the fire is not there. And how often in that dark season or challenging season, it's easy to look at the situation and be like, man, this sucks. And get caught up in that moment of challenge and see that as the reality. How often do we think, is this worth it? Do I want to do this? I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I don't know if this friendship is benefiting me anymore. That's based on this one moment and we lose sight of the whole big picture. But if we focus on these four areas, I think it makes a big difference if we look at those in both relationships and business. One of the things as you were talking is not allowing ourselves to take the easy way out. The easy way out is I'm just not built for this. This isn't working and celebrating the fact that you're probably listening to this show and this episode because you're a fighter and to continue the fight, but to figure out how can the fight be towards a more consistent life experience and what we can do to control that. And so we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater or whatever they say when you're locked into your why, when you have a conscious focus on your why, you're not going to allow it to go unravel. And so David, I know both you and I have shared our relationship experience and we've had a colorful past that the colors weren't that beautiful. And now being here, this is the best relationship we've ever had. It is a for life forever. And going back to like the why is to have a meaningful connected relationship experience as best friends with each other, we're not going to allow that fight or those two fights to continue to propel and go down the give up, right? It's coming back to recentering and saying all the things that we've learned about relationships, we know that we want to be connected. We want to be thriving and enjoy our time together. Stop this, right? And come back to like why we're here. And then it's, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I'm not going to waste any more time today coming back to the why, getting clear of the fog because you were just in the moment and you're not making a conscious choice because you were frustrated and coming back and recentering to the why helps to clear the fog and move forward. Have you experienced that sometimes on these episodes, I learn as much as I'm giving out. Like, I think I learn more than the probably listeners do. Sometimes I get some key takeaways from our own episodes as you were talking the thing that comes to mind is let your why be bigger than your current frustration. And when you can stay centered on that why, I'm challenging you for listening to this right now, think of a relationship that you're in that challenge season. There's moments or days or evenings, whatever, that we have these challenges. And it's like, here's what is one of the tools. And I didn't think about it until you just said that, but you asked me the question, hey, David, what helps you get back on that positive mindset. And this didn't even come to my mind until you were just making that list. But my why is so freaking big. And while I feel down or I feel discouraged or maybe in tears, maybe my heart is broken, what I try to really stay connected to is that why. Because we all lose sight of that. And if you're a parent out there, and sometimes the challenge in today's world of parenting can seriously seem overwhelming. If there's so many extenuating circumstances around that, 
And sometimes the challenge of being parenting can seem overwhelming. Go back to the why of what you're trying to accomplish with your kids in a relationship with your significant other. Go back to what that person really means to you, who you know they really are, how much you really love them, how much you care about them. The end goal. What is the end goal that you're committed to? And if you stay focused on that why, it's not sweeping the challenge under the rug or denying or deflecting. No, it makes it worth it to work through the challenge. Whatever those feelings are, I'm isolated, I'm lonely. Whatever the feelings that you are experiencing are, it makes it worth saying, hey, I want to work through these because my why is bigger than my current frustration. And so in relationships, they're challenging. Relationships are hard. No matter how hot the fire is, it dims. So number one, stay connected to your why. That's really good. And then the vision. Talk to me, Nikki, in a relationship. They can get challenging no matter how good they are. What's some tips that we can explore together with our friends to keep that vision and to share that vision and to help that get through the challenge, the vision that you have and staying focused on that. Let's explore that just a little bit around a relationship. Clearly defining the vision. That's like writing it out, recentering on what it is so much of intentionality or manifestation. We're in control of our destiny and the vision is clarity around the future. When you're leading your own life and you're leading other people, you have clarity. And so to be able to clearly articulate what we're trying to do and where we're going, tying into like why we're doing this, why we're climbing the hill together and then communicating that and making sure that the other person is on the same page, I think is really powerful. That's so good. One of the things that you said that is critical in this is people, the people that we have in our lives that help us navigate when the fire dims. And it's interesting, Nikki, last night I heard one of our friends leave you an audio message and they were sharing a challenge that they were having in the message to you. They said, Hey, please call me out on my shit. If you see this differently, that really spoke to me because if we have people in our lives that can do that, who aren't okay with us just accepting the fire being out. I mean, being willing to help you see the vision, help you connect back to your why. Sometimes it's hard to do it yourself. Sometimes it's hard to put that lighter fluid on yourself. It's hard. And sometimes it takes the people in your life to say, Hey, this relationship is worth fighting for. Don't forget that. Or those kids. Yes. They might be making you crazy right now, but here's the long-term vision. I can promise you that someday you're going to look back on this and you're going to have a great relationship with them. And this season is going to seem like a lifetime ago and you won't even remember it. I had a friend just recently, I was sharing just a parenting challenge that I was having. And this friend really spoke life into me. And they said, David, I know this seems overwhelming at the moment and you don't see this. I know you don't see it, but I promise you I've been there, done that. My kids are older and I experienced a very, very similar situation and I promise, hang in there, hang in there and do the right thing. Stay true to the cause. Stay true to what you're trying to accomplish, because in a few years, you're going to look back and this is going to be very different. And it gave me hope. If that person wasn't in my life, friends, I'm going to tell you, I felt overwhelmed at that moment with the challenges of parenting that I was struggling to see that I was struggling to light the fire and I needed someone else to do it for me. And I'm so grateful for those people in our lives and my challenge to you. If you're listening to this and you have situations in your relationships, that's overwhelming. The fire's down. The fire's dim. Don't seek out the people that are going to help you stomp on that fire and put it out. Find the people in your life who are going to help you speak truth to you, call out your shit, inspire you, lift you up, build you up and help you relight the fire. Get those people in your life. I love that you shared the story that you had about your friend that said, keep going. Yep. I've been there. The hope that that provides when the challenges come our way, there's others that have been through it. So the magnificence of mentoring can be so hope filled and we can walk away with this fuel from someone else's story that they shared that helps us to see that we're not alone and that this is not going to take us out and that somebody else believes in us. Like we've talked before about borrowed belief and how 
important that is, but the people that we surround ourselves with to uplift us. Also remembering we get to be that for those other people around us as well. The people that we're with to inspire us and to provide hope. And I think our job is to reach out and be vulnerable and to share when things are challenging. When someone asks you like, how's it going? You're not painting a picture of something that it's not. You're also not trying to be a victim and woe is me, but really manage that. Like I'm trying to be real right now and this is where it's at. And if you have anything to share, like any kind of inspiration, I'd love to talk and just opening that door for someone else to be able to give their perspective and provide some fire from their experience. That's so good. Let's just keep reinforcing that throughout the whole episode that the reality is accept it, acknowledge it, own it. The fire is going to dim. It is unavoidable. It doesn't matter how hot it is. But the point you made was celebrating, celebrating the little things. Here's my challenge to you. If you are listening to this today with your significant other, however that relationship is right now, find something special in that relationship to celebrate with them today. Do it today. The power in celebrating the positive things and the good things, how that can transition your mindset when things are flowing and you're in that season where you have the evening, the date night, the dinner, the walk in the beautiful sunshine that you just feel like, this is why I work through the hard things. Celebrate those as passionately as you get down about the hard times. I'll step in there really quick about business, something that we just did after really ending with a quarter that was not what we had designed. There were many things that contributed to our Q1 of 2023 not going very well. And I think I'm coming off of that now. And so really this topic around how to light my fire and throw some lighter fluid on things, I really am needing this for myself. But something that did help our team got together the last week of the quarter and we reflected on all the wins we could think of. So me and one other person on the team got together and compiled all of these to bring these to the forefront to lead the conversation. Just wanted to look at all that we've done. I think we had gone back since like the last week of the quarter, last week of March, and we implemented new software programs. That's hard. Some new changes with who's on the team in different roles. There's a lot of things that we were going through, but dang, look at all we accomplished. So in the midst of it didn't go as planned, the numbers weren't where they were, but there were some places that the numbers were great. What we focus on is typically where our fire diminishes. So there's many numbers in our business. I look at a revenue number and sometimes that's, you know, where my head's at and gets me down. But then I look at how many people we freaking impacted. We have a number to see how many people consumed what we do, which is around a powerful why. Our why always recenters and helps us in business. And it just level set to say, okay, are we talking about impact of the mission? Or are we talking about dollars and cents? Now, business to stay healthy needs the dollars and cents. So I'm not going to go there. Yes, that is something challenging, but to really see the impact that we made and we're still here. We really celebrated a bunch of things that because of the fog of being in this mindset of looking at just a couple of key rocks for our quarter that we didn't hit, you kind of forget about the others. And so you've got to spend time in reflection, business relationships, apply this in any area of your life. But just to recap here, I think anyone that's listening is a fighter. We're going to keep going. We're not going to give up. And so how do you refuel yourself with what you know works? So we shared some practices. David will do a summary here in a minute. But my question to you is, are you aware of what refuels your fire? You know what it is. Like so many times the greatest coaching conversations are asking us what we know inside, right? For us to answer the question and you know what those things are and do you have an active toolbox that you're conscious and present of to be able to leverage those things because the roller coaster is real. We just have to learn how to keep it a little more consistent for our life experience to be more enjoyable. Find an area in your life where you feel you're struggling to get the fire lit. Do like Nikki does. Grab a bottle of lighter fluid, whatever that lighter fluid is for you, and pour the heck of that stuff out on your fire. As many bottles as it takes. Get it lit. Let's go. So, you just listened to this episode. Now, join us in being addicted to betterment. Please subscribe to the show, share with your friends, tag us, 
And please, take a moment, leave a review. Yeah, we do want your stars, but we also, we really want the feedback. 